It's Shalom again. Rastafari. Let's speak on <clears throat> this particular interesting area of prophecy right here that is concerning the the seven the seven kings. And now the eighth is a beast and the last. Now when we can Speak of this this part of Revelation is interesting, you know, concerning the seven kings that are spoken of within the book of um, Revelation. Let's see if we can bring this up right here, um, the link right here. Now, we have to look at Dendera. We have to look at Dendera. Dendera, um, the temple of uh, Hathor, of it, Hit Haru. You know, the Temple of Dendera. Now, when we look at the Temple of Dendera, this is from the same site that we were pointing out before. Let's look at this particular aspect. Now, this all connects with with 2012 and the ancient prophecy and, the, and that which is witnessed, the witness of the stars, the true stars, the real stars, the heavenly stars, Jah's stars. You know, we said that every nigus, is a star, you know, every nigga is a star, ones that know just how true that, that, um, folk saying actually really is, now, this is on Egyptian, uh, zodiac, this is a particularly interesting page on the Egyptian zodiac from the siloam.net, and some of the suggested reading, go Google it, look it up, Try to download as we do, you know, as much as you can, you know, save the pages in a suitcase if you can print it out. Um, if it's not too cost prohibitive, print it out, get a hard copy. Definitely very good to have a hard copy. And it examines, some might call this, um, from a certain perspective, some might call this um, astroarchaeology. Astroarchaeology, and there's a connection with astrotheology and the ancient mysteries, and from this particular writer here, um, the Bible or biblical prophecy from a a universal approach. That means Christ and and God is at the highest, but not from the the Western Gentile whitewash that has ignored and. Um, regarded ancient cultures as being foolish, you know, the popular arrogance of this present time, which is all very much linked to the the mystery of the seven and the eighth that is spoken of in Revelation chapter 17, verse 10. So this particular is a book review, The Mysteries of Egyptian Zodiacs and Other Riddles of Ancient History, a guide to dating ancient astronomical uh, data. And there's a few authors on this, um, as you can see right there, and this was from Siloam. Now what we want to focus on right here, the Siloam.net, um, and this is from 2003, right? And it concerns, you know, the mysteries of the Egyptian zodiacs, some of the comparisons based on ancient, like the Mayans, as 2012 is, is re-examined <clears throat> according to the cosmogenesis or the cosmology. So we have both an ancient Egyptian, a, a Judeo or Christian, approach to it as well as a comparison of the Mayans to see that this testimony that the Bible speaks about that's in the stars. In other words, that what's witnessed in the stars, God's God's clockwork, which some of the ancient peoples, like some modern peoples, <clears throat> misinterpret so they worship the host of the heaven, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Instead of recognizing that there's a particular gospel or a particular good news, a particular story that is written in these heavenly stars. Now, here's where the connection with the recently published 
the recently published um, Witness of the Stars that we've been speaking on, and we got a couple other vids that, whether before this or after this, hopefully you will hear a little bit more about it. And just do a little Google search. You might be able to find a PDF. You can download it. And if you want to order a copy of any of our books, it's www.lojsociety.org forward slash books or click on the books tab and see some of the available books. And in this particular time, we have two, um, Cannabis Matrix and the Witness of the Stars. <clears throat> so now let's um, overstand this, and we'll begin from the last part right here, the last part of this. Like we said, this article, if we had the opportunity to go through this in the details, you know, as in our studies and some of that which we were able to um, gain, gather, and glean um, from this, um, you know, I and I would. But what we're going to do right here, right now, is kind of touch on some of the highlights, hopefully to um, excite or inspire one's curiosity to find or to seek the truth in order to find the truth for oneself. Because I can tell you about it, but if I can inspire you to check it out for yourself and you check it out and find the truth for yourself, then we can really build and go to a higher level because I don't have to make you believe. You don't have to try to make me believe. We don't have to try to pretend that we accept that we would know the truth and therefore we will be free. That's what this, this whole age of change and this new age is really all about when we look at it from the truth of Jah and Joshua or God and his Christ. Now, here the author says right here that um, the cause of these rational oversights is redaction, is redaction of the holistic image for the sake of expediency. In other words, we live in a world with a lot of so-called rationality. We call it like a rational irrationality, but what, what so-called rational, so-called left-brained thoughts, using that tie, that 10%, and forgetting about the 90%, so-called the right brain aspect. But these rational oversights of modern man, and especially in this Gentile world system, we can see this very clearly manifested. You, you understand? Um, it's a rational oversight concerning the real meaning of these of these symbols here. You also in the real interpretation. Many believe when they see this, this is the ancient primitive people who didn't know nothing. You understand? They all were idol worshippers and sun worshippers. That is the lie that that Satan being cast down has spread among all peoples. But what we're learning now from these scientists that have taken much of the Mayan and the and the um, mysteries of the Egyptian zodiac and and other um, ancient evidence, monumental, documental, so forth and so on, like Dendera, and have reexamined it according to what they know of modern science, it's like the Dogon story, where the Dogon were telling them certain things, and because it was the African people, and it sounded far-fetched, and so they got modern um, telescopes, then they recognize. You see, the heavens is the truth, and the heavens is written Jaws and God's truth. And in the scriptures, we have a reflection, reflected light of that. But the consciousness, there's been a consciousness um, downgrading. In other words, we, 2012, we see 2012 as, a, as a, a, a catastrophe of consciousness. Those who are still trapped in the old paradigm or the Babylonian, you know, the Babylon, the chaos mentality, you understand the greed mentality, the arrogance mentality, you know, the seven deadly sins mentality will not be able to transition holistically into this age of peace. So here's where the destruction, here's where the, here's where the imbalance, here's where the conflict is. Some are looking forward positively to this new age. You understand? While others are looking to manipulate, if possible, this new age for their own greedy purposes. The Bible is, gives a very good example of that in um, 
in the book of James. And let's just touch on this and move forward in the book of James. Um, in James' uh, epistle, he speaks about in the last days where it says, Go to now, ye rich men. Look at the whole economic situation and what we're hearing about the rich just trying to get richer. for, And, and, and they have everything already. And you imagine for what? This sounds like madness. It is. This is the madness at the end of the an old cycle. But see, the time, the time that people are looking at, like 2012 and the Western Gentile time, is off of Jai's and God's time. So we don't look up and recognize the true signs, the heavenly signs, the real witness of the stars, and we're caught up on man-made stars and false stars and false gods and, and false dreams because we don't see the vision. You know what I'm saying? We don't see the vision. Now it says, go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries. This is James chapter 5. James chapter 5, verse 1, Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. This is what we've been witnessing in the last couple of decades, these last days. It's the rich getting richer, heaping up treasures for these last days. But it says, Behold, look and see the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. Let's look at the history of this this um Western Gentile New World, America. Think about it, a land of plenty, opportunity, and the American dream. But yet, how did it really begin? You understand? Was that in accordance with the will of the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Or was that using his name in vain, saying, Lord, Lord, and he says, what? I never knew you away from me, ye what? Workers of iniquity. Was this nation founded on righteousness and truth, or is it like James 5 and 4 says, Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. We can talk about slavery. We can talk about the lost sheep. We can talk about Beta Israel. That is our true history as Ethiopian Hebrews. But yet we can even look at the same pattern going on today with the so-called immigrants, the modern Hyksos. The so-called immigrants who come over here, these are the laborers, whether it's the Mexicans or others, who reap down the fields, but their wages are kept back by fraud. And the cries of them which have, which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth, or the Adonai Sabaoth. That's a very interesting name, because Sabaoth, it relates to the host. Notice that the Sabaoth, when we speak about the Sabaoth, we're speaking about the heavenly host. And this is what we see before us in Dendera. You know what I'm This is what we speak, what we see um, before us in Dendera. So when it says in this page that the cause, let's get this right here, that the cause of these rational oversights, like the, what the rich men do, you understand, heaping up their gold and silver, you understand, ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and have been wanton when we hear about all the waste, you understand, of monies for war and all these things, and not enough money for the poor, you understand, not enough money for the inner city programs, you know, for the poor and underprivileged children, so forth and so on. The, the, the skyrocketing college course when after the First or the Second World War, they gave these mainly white you know, for the whites, the Europeans, to themselves, they gave free college, everything. They built them homes in the suburbs because they understood that's what they they deserve to give those soldiers of that particular generation. But as the American military seems becomes more racially diversified, the, these benefits are not there. Something is very, very wrong, and the Bible speaks to this. Ye have lived in pleasure on earth and have been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. 
So in a day when some are losing their lives and being slaughtered, there's others who are profiting off of this. They say war is money making. Ye have condemned and killed the tzaddik. You have condemned and killed the just, the righteous, and he doth not resist you. But there's an exhortation here in view of the ever coming Adoni, or the coming one, the unveiling of the Lord. But remember, before that full unveilment, there is the wrath that proceeds. So it says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, to the coming of Adonai. Behold, the husband man waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter rain. You, you, you notice something that's used in this example here. In this example here in James 5 and 7, it likens Adoni to a husbandman, one who is like a farmer waiting for the precious fruit of the earth, and one who must have patience until he receives the early and the latter rain. I mean, there is much that is, is tellable, you understand, is teachable in this. But the main point is patience here. The patience is the faith, is the amen of the saints. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts. Establish your consciousness on truth, for the coming of Adonai draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. You understand? The door. Now, Dalet, when you get into the uh, Kabbalah and the Kabbalah Dalet, you understand the fourth letter, it is the number signifies four. Four is the door. Four also is the cross. And then we have the square is, is, is four. And then the circle can be squared. And the circle and the square, though they're different in geometric shape, they both are the same amount of degrees, mathematically 360 degrees. So we have a gateway. You understand? Know we're at a gateway point. But now, how does this connect with our original message right here. We want to speak about the seven and the eighth and and, and, and and this whole prophecy that is spoken of in Revelation seventeen verses ten to eleven and how this this um portion of Dendera, you understand, speak to that. So we want to touch on the rational oversights. You understand? The rich, the arrogant, the materialist, they come into the rational they are the rational thinkers, but they're making a rational oversight. You understand? Is the, the redaction, the redaction now is their version, their spin of the holistic image, which is the true image. We can even say the holy image for the sake of expediency. In other words, let's get this out the way. Let's make this quick. Why? Because it says here that the devil, Diablos, and his accomplices knoweth that he hath but a what? A short time. So notice how we're living in a time where there's some beings who feel that there's a short time. Expediency is a usurpation of eternal life. That's why the Bible teaches us in James the lesson, seeks to teach us the lesson of patience and even likening it in a verbal hieroglyph to a, a farmer, you understand, to one who's a husbandman or a farmer who has long patience, you understand, who's waiting for the, 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 the early and the latter rain. Take a look at this right here, this particular image also from Dendera. Now, the authors here have highlighted this, that this right here, these two um, daughters of God, or they would say goddesses, but daughters of God is love, symbolized love. She has closed flowers right here. Now, this is wisdom. It's a feathered crown. You understand? She has a feathered crown here. Now, she's ho holding an open flower. Now, the link with the Anabosom, we've made that, but we'll touch on that as we go forward. Here she has the water or the life to come. You understand? She's holding an ankh here. And so here's the waters of life. 
standing in the bark, these two sisters, love and wisdom. Now, over here, we have another important principle. You understand the word that must become flesh. All of these are words that must become flesh as attributes, living principles, compassion. Compassion, right, on the head of Aquarius or the water bearer, which is the age that they say we are coming into, you understand, has open flowers and is portrayed as an, a gardener. Now, notice he's holding two libations, need-filling waters, the need-filling waters, in other words, the, the early and the latter rain. So these are the vessels of life-giving waters as we look at the age of Aquarius. Now, over here they teach us and tell us that when, we, when we're using the pronouns, speaking about the particular columns of the city of the 24 elders, we can redact the complete meaning of the eastern entrance to the zodiac from Gemini, see the twins right here, Gemini or the two sisters, to Aquarius using the masculine evangel evangelistic um, words of Mark chapter 14 verses 13 to 15 where it says, and we quote, and he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith to them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him wheresoever, wheresoever he shall go in, and say ye to the good man of the house, The master saith, Where is the guest chamber? where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. And he will shew you a large upper room furnished and prepared and make ready for us. And when the meal of heavenly manna, when the meal of that heavenly manna is completed, the journey out along the western wall. Now, when we look at Dendera, we can see this a little, a little better from under Capricorn to Leo. Is echoed in the words of Luke twenty two thirteen to 16, quote, And they went and found as he had said to them, and they made ready the pass over the Fasica. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said to them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of Jah. Now, the pronouns represent a light into the modern world and the path to that light clearly had been known to those priest architects who engraved the hallowed or the holy halls of the temple to Hathor Hit Kheru, which means the house of Kheru or the house of the chosen one the Horus or the mother of God and we know that the chosen one is our black Lord and Savior Yeshua Ha Moshiach now in Egyptian Christian or Christianity, he was known as the Cherui, which is Ethiopic, and that means the chosen, the elect. Now, here we find that the master craftsman placed the description of what some may call reincarnation, or we can say word becoming flesh, at the winter solstice on the pronouns sealing zodiac at Dendera. This side of the temple ceiling was dedicated to the principle of the resurrection and reincarnation of the Heavenly Father within the physical body. Now, this is interesting, considering Abba Kedus and that which we have learned and that which we have faith in and that which we are made. Now, the image of so-called reincarnation or again becoming flesh, the word becoming flesh, is presented between Capricorn, and this you see the Capricorn right here, and Sagittarius. And you see the Sagittarius or the Sagittarius, Sagittarius here. Now, look at this carefully, and you'll see the connection with 
with the seven kings and the eighth, right? Now, first we're going to go to the oldest material or the older material, scripturally, biblically, Dendera, ancient Egypt, so forth and so on. Then we'll get to the latter matter, you understand, say the New Testament, you understand, and then the prophetic of, of, of this concerning the seven and the eight. Now, Torah. Tauret, this is Tauret right here. Tauret or Tauret holds a chain of eight links in this image. So if you count these right here, there's a chain of eight links in this image. Now, the eight loops have not been verified. There's many who have speculated on what these eight loops mean, you understand? But they have not been verified. But if the image taken from the mysteries of the Egyptian zodiacs is accurate, we can interpret the eight links as the eight kings of Revelation chapter 17, verses 10 to 11, where it reads, and we quote, And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space, and the beast that was and is not, get this right here, the beast that was and is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space, and the beast that was and is not, even he is of the eighth. Now, when you see this right here and you understand this in its true historical, now this is, we see this to be an outworking. This is the manifestation of what, of what according to the ancients, like the ancient Egyptians and the mysteries that Moses was learned in, Dendera, as we have in Dendera, we have Tauret now holding that chain of eight links. Now, I want you to really pay attention both to the, to the ancient prophecy, you understand, within the, that's recorded in the stars, you understand, and how the ancients recorded it, and now what we see manifest in our time. The first of these seven kings, you understand, is Pius the 11th, 1922 to 1939. Very important, because this all begins with the Lateran Treaty in 1929, one year prior to the coronation of Moan, this is the Emnegeta Yehuda Kadamawi, Haile Selassie, Siyuma Egeziabia, Nugusa Neges, Zechopia, for the crowning of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. You really have to pay attention to the connection of the Lateran Treaty on one side of the prophetic, of the prophetic um, register and the coronation of Haile Selassie, of Kadamawi Haile Selassie, on the other side of that prophetic register of revelation. So we have five here are fallen, right? Five are fallen. Now, what does, what does the scripture say? It says five are fallen. One is, the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. So, that one is, right, at the particular prophetic moment that Revelation 17, 10 to 11 is speaking of. That means that we can actually see this recorded because it's how the ancients, when they were able to properly interpret and the, the, the highest interpretation really of these ancient prophecies we have scripturally, prophetically from the Judeo, the Old Testament to the New Testament, but the keys of properly interpreting these ancient signs must be understood from a non-Gentile um, Christianity and, and a non-Gentile uh, so-called Judaism. We have to get to the Afro-Shemitic roots. We have to get to our Ethiopic roots. We have to get to the root, you understand, know, to the crux, you understand, of the matter. So this is why there's such a connection now. We look on one side concerning the beast or the antichrist and here you have the manifestation of it then when you look on the other side of the prophetic register and you say well well where is where is jah in other words where is jah manifesting or where is god manifesting you know we can look at the popes and 
many, even the, the Vatican people are almost in agreement. You know, if you look at a lot of their books, they do acknowledge that much that Revelation is talking about is concerning, you know, this, this church, you know, saying this church of Rome. But now if we go to the other side of this prophetic register, who are they fighting against? They are fighting against the Father and the Son. You see, they're fighting against the Father and the Son. And now when we bring this picture, well, you all know, most of you all are familiar with the coronation pictures. We want to bring this up for some of those who might be, you know, new to viewing this. You understand? Know but this is probably the best one right here. It's a painting that's in one of the holy cathedrals in Ethiopia, churches in Ethiopia, and it's basically the coronation, the coronation ceremony in 1930. You understand? On the prophetic side, of the, 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 the godly side of the prophecy, because Revelation shows you what the righteous and what Jah is doing and and what the Christ and the Christians are doing, and then you see on the opposite side how the Antichrist are persecuting those righteous ones, and that's what you see within the fascist invasion of Ethiopia, because Ethiopia testifies to both the true doctrine, the true teaching of Christ, to the true Bible, and even to the ancient images of Christ, you understand, in his kingly character of the true image. It's for the whitewash, you understand, the so-called whitewashing of the image. But now, getting back to the seven kings and the eighth is a beast. So now we see in, it's in 1978, you understand, in 1978, because this now is the pope that was so-called on the throne during the time of of the Ethiopian, the creeping satanistic coup against Ketamawi Haile Selassie, against the elect of God. And then this pope reigns for 33 days. It's John Paul I. And then another John Paul II comes in now. He is the sixth. He is the one who is. Now, he's also seriously wounded in 1981. Now, here we have, as the seventh, we have Benedict. Benedict the sixteenth, Benedict XVI, XVI, April nineteenth, and notice that date right there. You understand? April nineteenth is very significant. I think it has a, a a Hitler, some Hitler link, if I'm correct, to it. Maybe it's Hitler's birthday or whatever. But here now, this chart says, as we get to the eighth, the eighth is a beast and the last. So there's seven kings. So. We have Benedict. Benedict the sixteenth would be the seventh king. Now, here some speculate that it's a devil from the bottomless pit that will impersonate John Paul the second. You understand that 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 this eighth, that there's a mysterious so called eighth pope. But most commentators who have studied this and studied the scripture and see the connection with Rome though they may be blinded to the glorious gospel of the king of kings of Kedemar Rihala Selassie, they can recognize that when this part of prophecy was, was being fulfilled, was this 1929? And who's connected with this? The first, um, Pius the Eleventh is Mussolini, Benito Mussolini. These are the same ones who would bless the bombs you understand, that were used to kill defenseless Ethiopians. You understand, those white robe, those martyrs in that biblical land, all the testimonies of Ethiopia record a very, a more biblical land than so-called Jerusalem. You understand, people who are true believers, a, a spiritual land, a holy land. Why would these attack those? But since we know who these are, you know what I'm saying? It's very easy to understand that. So we have a complete um, biblical or prophetic scripture. So we want to show you this concerning the seven kings and the eighth is a beast and the last. Because we're hearing a lot about Pope um, Benedict. He's trying to do certain things. Some say that this prophecy here may be true, that he only rules a short time. You understand? And then there is the eighth. 
Now, when we now compare this, if we will, in the time that we have here, let's bring this up. Let's compare this with Dendera. What is said here at Dendera? You understand? So we have between what Capricorn, this would be Capricorn right here, and over here is Sagittarius. You understand? Is Sagittarius, right? Between Capricorn and Sagittarius is an image of the word becoming flesh, or some might interpret this as reincarnation, but the word becoming flesh. Now, Toret, or the Torah, some say Torah is connected with Tauret. You understand? That the Tauret holds a chain of eight links. You notice the eight links right here, right? Now, this has been linked and connected, as we have just done right here, connected with Revelation chapter 17, right? In Revelation chapter 17, verses 10 to 11. Now, what's the meaning of the eight links? The meaning of these eight links are the eight kings that we just showed you. The meaning of these eight links are the eight kings. And it's related to the seven spirits of God in this particular view right here, in the celestial or the heavenly view. You understand? Now, when the ego overextends its rational convictions, now really get this if you, if you can. When the ego, remember what Christ says to the disciple? What does Christos, what does Yehu, you know, Yeshua, you understand, say to the disciples? Yeah. He says, anyone who chooses to follow me has to do what? Has to deny themselves, pick up their cross, and follow me. They must deny what? They must deny ego. Now, let's learn something right here, that whenever the ego, right, whenever the ego overextends, right, whenever the ego overextends, its rational conviction, it becomes a lord. And this, and this is who these seven kings, the eighth, the beast, and the last, this is exactly what's going on. This is exactly the, the consciousness catastrophe, you understand, and the catabol at the end of this particular age because they are not quite, they are. They have not received the Holy Spirit of the New. They are holding on. They are overextending their ego, not Jah's way or Yah's way, but it's their way. So when the ego overextends its rational conviction, it becomes lord over a place that has no existence. Did you get that? When the ego overextends its rational convictions, it becomes a lord. It becomes a lord over, over a place that doesn't have any existence. You know so when we now understand when it says, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh and goeth in, into perdition. You know the ego has, has overextended its rational convictions. We can almost say it's a left-brainism. You understand? Um, overextended it. Not use it in balance, but overextend it. It becomes a lord, a, a, a tyrant, one can even say, but over a place that has no existence. Thus, the so-called reincarnation of the word becoming flesh requires that the ego, that the ego cease and desist its course, and that consciousness, let's get back to this right here, that consciousness returns, that consciousness returned to the body as common sense. Now, this is the resurrection of the body and the reincarnation or the word, the logos becoming flesh, becoming carnos of the mind of the creator. That's the only true so-called reincarnation you understand, that truly exists, you understand. Um, now, people will argue from maybe Hindu or Buddhist philosophy, but that was true up to the point. Once Christos, Yeshua, come forward, he has reorganized, 
you know what I'm saying, reorganize heaven and earth, which is all power has been given to him. There's a meaning that that was said. It wasn't just poetry. The seven stars now, now, now we, see, we have seven stars here, the Pleiades. You know, it says, seek him that maketh the Pleiades, the seven stars, the seven sisters in the Taurus constellation and Orion, because the seven stars around the slaughtered, get this name, the bull of my mother, the slaughtered bull of my mother. You know what that, that, that slaughtered bull of my mother is? That's the golden calf. This slaughtered bull of my mother, when you understand this from Dendera, is that golden calf. So in a strange sense, what the Israelites, instead of moving forward, those they turned backward, you understand, to the golden calf. And see, this golden calf is associated with the Pleiades. The Pleiades, if you look up in the celestial hemisphere, is the little dipper. And ultimately, the big dipper of the seventh heaven, what's known from the ancient time as the seventh heaven. Now, the Orion image on the third bark... Now there's an Orion image on the third the third bark in the upper register that's between Cancer and Gemini. It clearly shows the 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 the, the ladle, you know, like the panhandle, the ladle of the seven stars in the hand of Bootis, a particular constellation. Now these are the three um laddies, you know, the three um panhandles that include um Pleiades, Little Dipper, and Big Dipper. If you ever look up there and something that looks like a like a panhandle or something like that, you're probably seeing either Pleiades, Little Dipper, or Big Dipper. Now, unless the Ace King, and, and now this is interesting. This is interesting. Let's bring this up right here. We're showing you the past, right, and we're showing you the present. You understand? So the eschatological, you can say, from Dendera, which gave us celestial time, Right, and now this is actually showing you these are the seven kings and the eighth being of the beast, according to the revelation, prophetic unfoldment, um, 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 unfolding and fulfillment of it. But here, unless the eighth king is successfully defeated by the child of the new Ian, the son of man, biblically speaking, this is the child of humanity, yes, so lich. Unless that this eighth king, who is a devil from the bottomless pit, right? Unless this eighth, or really it's a consciousness actually, from nowhere, really, wanting, wanting to achieve that which doesn't exist. You know, it's actually the consciousness of this particular end time generation. But unless that eighth king, which is a tyranny, is successfully defeated by the child of the new Ian, by the son of man, the son of Adam, you understand, the son of Osiris, you can, you can call it from an ancient Egyptian perspective, but this new, this new child, this, that's Ms. Match says we must be new, you understand, we must be a, 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 of, of a new race and owe our allegiance to God, you understand, and in Christ to man and to the highest principles. This is what the King of Kings, the teaching of his majesty, which is in tune with this prophetic um, fulfillment right here. And let's bring you back to um, Dendera, you understand, Dendera. Sometimes can't take looking at, you know, looking at those, those kings. They're just so horrible. But unless the eighth king is successfully defeated by the child of the new Ian, the process of reincarnation, the process of the word becoming flesh will stay bound to rational material reality. This 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 is this is probably the, the the most difficult thing for most folks to even comprehend. This is the matrix. The matrix is the rational material reality is the matrix. Toret or Tauret is the constellation Draco, or Draco, or actually we saw an older book, it actually says Drago, 
like the C was a G. I don't know if that was Masonically, but it wasn't Draco, but Drago, linking like with Dragon. But here we have Taure in the constellation Draco, which holds the axis of the ecliptic. There's an axis of the ecliptic. You know, when um, Ezekiel saw the wheels and the wheels, it was much higher than what most folks, most Christians, Western Gentiles have thought. He was looking at, he, he was seeing the heavens. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was looking at God's calculation of time. Some people think it was spaceship and this and that, but it was, it was much higher. It was a witness of the stars. Thus, those who stay in Torah's domain, those who stay in the domain of Torah, will simply fall around the sun for eternity in habitual cycles of life and death. Those who stay bound, get this, those who stay in Torah's domain will simply fall around the sun for eternity. Is this, could, be, could this be the bottomless pit of revelation, this bottomless pit idea, fall for eternity? So these things are prefigured. Even in these images you see before you, even though most folks, even those who say they understand, many of them have only begun to really understand because a lot that was necessary for this understanding has only come forward even very recently because the generation that was meant to understand it are the I them and is I and I, is this generation, if one is willing to make their wills obedient to good influence, to Jah's influence. Now, if the love and wisdom that is the goddesses, in a sense, pictured, or the, or the daughters of Jah in Hathor's dream can be instilled into the flesh of the child of the new Ian, then that child, that lidge, that Lidge will experience the reincarnation or the word becoming flesh at the top of the world in the seventh heaven. And that's what the Bible is talking about, about the, about the redemption of the body, to wit, the redemption of the body, where we go from mortality, those of us who are alive, you know what I'm saying, we go from mortality to immortality because that child being born again, one becomes a child, be experiences the word becoming flesh. Not the word as an intellectual thing, but the word actually becoming flesh of their flesh and bone of their bone. Now, this reincarnation, as we touched on before in a recent video, we want to touch on reincarnation because we had dealt with... Um, some matters of reincarnation, but what we were speaking on is do not confuse the simple scientific meaning of the word reincarnate again in flesh with, say, Hindu or other so-called outdated Eastern philosophies. They still have principles, but the cosmology of the end, for many of them that began so far before and were not on the right course, are off course. They, they they are offline, and, and, and you know, and this is kind of hard because people say all type of religion, you know, makes me feel good, but some of it is actually offline. Cause remember what Christ said, that all power has been, all authority has been given to me. You understand? All authority, and there's no way to get to the Father's house except through our Black Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMoshiach. And ex since it's not just through Him physically. But it's, you have to acknowledge this, the physical truth. He's black. But moreover, it's eating and digesting that word and letting that word become, become living. You understand? In other words, actualizing, in other words, the word. Now, reincarnation in this sense, the word becoming flesh, occurs between Capricorn and Sagittarius. Between Capricorn and Sagittarius. Right, and here's Capricorn right here, and here's Sagittarius right here. So, so this word becoming flesh takes place in this area right here, right? And um, this is where the archer and the centaur are joined with the two wings of a great eagle and the Horus Falcon of truthful consciousness. 
Now, this is similar, sounds similar if you remember Revelation talk about, and she's given what? She's given two wings of an eagle or something to that effect. She's given the wings of a great eagle, a, a, a eagle, and she flies into the wilderness to a place where she's nourished for time and time and half a time, right? Now, the two-faced Sagittarius. Now, I want you to check out the two-faced Sagittarius. All you Sagittarius people, don't, don't feel no way. Ja loves you. Love Ja, right? The two faces now. In in the Western zodiac, you don't get to see the two faces of um, of, of of Sagittarius. You know, usually they have it as some so-called centaur or this or that. So for it's still a kind of a centaur too. But it's interesting the nuances because as we study the heaven, we'll see that these particular nuances in Dendera they actually signify something that's really witnessed up there in the heavens. Because remember, people didn't have time for TV and a lot of the distractions folks have got right now. But anyway, the two-faced Sagittarius, it sees before and behind. It's like Janus. It's like the Egyptian Janus, you know, like where, where January come from. It sees in front and behind. In other words, it's like when Revelation when it says, I am he who was and, and I am he who is, who was, and will be. So the one who was speaking can look both past, in the past, like a, almost like a time traveler, and in the future, but simultaneously. So that, that's the triune God. Now here, Sagittarius possesses the ability, right, to see before and behind, see the future and the past, and it's clearly, according to the imagery here, a male that is ready to step upon the celestial bark of salvation, you know, this is the bark right here, the the boat, the celestial bark of salvation. So stepping off of, you could say almost like off of land and onto, that's not water, into a bark. You understand? Now the bark or the boat has a special significance, but here's the bark of salvation. Now the centaur has two tails, you know, and, and, and I give thanks for these ones who have studied it. You know, saying for for open, for open um, minded Christ guidedness that 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 you know can share these details. That's why I share it with you, even though we can't go through all the detail. We just point it out and say, check out Siloam dot net, download it. You know, um, um, redeem the time. You know what I mean? Study and show yourself approved. Get it if you can. Um, the center has two tails, and if you notice right here, this is one tail right here, and this is the next tail right here. It has two tails, right? Now, the physical tail, right, is straight. The spiritual tail is curled upward and contains, get this, it contains seven links. So this contains seven links. Remember, we begin off of the seven and the eight, and here, Torah has a chain that holds, um, um, I think, seven to eight links as well right here. Now, the tail here, similar to the chain over here, has seven, right, seven links. Having shed the crown of the eighth king, having shed the crown of the eighth king, thus what Revelation says, that the seven and the eighth one is, but it is basically not, you know, and, and this little area up here, we love this particular statement right here because it, it speaks to a principle. It says when the ego, the I am, what you think you are, you understand, overextends its rational convictions, what it tried to rationalize, justify itself. It becomes a Lord. It becomes a boss. I'm in charge. I'm the boss. I'm Lord, right? But over, over a place, check this out, over a place that has no real existence. So it becomes, in a sense, like a lord of the bottomless pit. And then when you go down to the part about um, Taurus, where it says Tauret is the constellation Draco, which holds the axis of the elliptic. Thus, those who stay in Taurus's domain, who stay in the domain of, you can say, the beast, or the former consciousness, will simply fall around the sun for eternity in habitual cycles of of life or death, you understand, or life and 
life and death. But now, here when we look at Sagittarius' tail, between Capricorn right here and Sagittarius, it's very, very interesting. And when we look at December 2012, you understand? Even though when we look up in the, in the heavens, we see it moving between Sagittarius and, um, and Scorpio, but you have to remember the procession of the equinoxes. It's almost like it's a wheel in a wheel. And, you know what I mean, moving in different directions. But there's a way to read it and understand it. But it has shed now the crown of the eighth king. So the wise Sagittarius is given the crown. And we see this crown right here, right, the crown um, of wisdom of Osar or Osiris. And that crown, we call it the bobo. It's like the bobo crown in a sense, right? Like on the sizzler crown. It's, it, but in Egypt, they call it the atef, the atef, the atef crown. All right. So now, all of this basically is 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 is. There's a little bit more to this, but I think I'm going to pause for the cause at this particular time. Once again, point out this particular article. Um, to you, and what we what we were studying right here is this whole idea of the seven and the eight, both from how the ancients perceived it based on the witness and the stars, and then how they picture, you know, use word pictures to explain it, and then when we look in the manifestation now here on the mundane, you understand, we see the seven and the eight right here. You see the seven kings right here, beginning from 1929, one year before Negus Teferi became Aras Teferi, and one year after um, Aras Teferi became Negus Teferi. You know, so it's a very prophetic, you know, time rate. And, and, and you have to remember the Lateran Treaty. I've talked about this before. You can look it up on the Internet. There's other... Bible scholars who have made this link about the Lateran Treaty and, and, and that prophecy about the deadly wound. You understand this deadly wound? Some think the deadly wound, right, is just Pope John Paul II. Um, not really. There's a, there was a deadly wound of the institution of the beast. You understand? When the popes lost their temporal powers, now the pope is not just a religious man. He's a statesman. He can, you know, he rules the, little, the smallest country in the world, even smaller than Israel. You understand, modern Israel, believe that, the state of Israel. And he is a religious figure, but he has political or kingly powers. And see, this is that deadly wound that was healed with the um, agency of Mussolini and Victor Emmanuel and, and the Pope. And then as a sacrifice, Ethiopia was sacrificed, and these are the same ones, Pope, the pious, the, the 11th, and notice they begin off of 11, right? Pious the 11th that you will see blessing the bombs. Mm -hmm. So when, when um, Revelation says this, let's just close out on this right here. Let's go back to the quote right here from Revelation um, um, 17, verses 10 to 11. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen. So we have the five fallen. Pius the 11th, Pius the 12th, John the 23rd, Paul the 6th, John Paul the 1st, 33 days. It's not like this Aton Pates thing after 33 years, a whole other subject matter there, but related. Um, can you remember the Pope and young boys, so forth and so on. Anyway, the, the, the sixth is John Paul II, 78 to 2005, seriously wounded in 1981. What does Revelation says? And there are five kings, I mean, there are seven kings, five are fallen. These five up to John Paul I, the 33 day -er, you understand, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. So when John on the Isle of Patmos was witnessing this and seeing this and writing of, of that which is written in the heavens, you understand, day unto day, 
knowledge night and tonight. You know what I mean? Um, the point in the heavens that he saw, you understand, know was something very much approximate to, because some say that this temple right here was completed sometime around this time. You understand, though the material, the temple was completed rather late, but the material in it is very much more ancient, you understand, because it speaks about processions of equinoxes and time periods in, in um, ancient astronomical language that according to Martin, NASA, billion dollar, you know, the billion dollar research, basically says that they were right, the ancients were right, but they just amazed that how could that be, that this will be thousands of years of, of, of calculations, but so it is. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. One is, and the other is not yet come. So these five fell, one is Pope John Paul. So, so the vision of 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 Revelation seventeen and ten was at this particular point that he saw this sixth one here. Now who do we have after the one that was? But at that time the one is. What does the word says? And the other is not yet come. The other we have is Benedict the sixteenth, April nineteenth. If I'm correct, that has Hitler's birthday or something like that. I don't know. Rules only a short a short time. Some say he is was the one yet to come. He was the one yet to come. This makes sense of all the fuss they made over him. So it says that the other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Could this short space be the short space that he is continuing? But it goes on to say, um, and the beast that was and is not. So there's a beast that was, Right? And is not. This is where these folks basically put the black and white of John Paul here and says that a devil from the bottomless pit will impersonate John Paul II and go into perdition. You know, and that's not, you know, very unlikely. That is more likely, likely since they are deifying this guy right now and giving him all sort of um, pseudo saintly Roman Catholic saintly props. So the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh and goeth, right, and goeth into perdition. Once again, to wrap this up, the meaning of the eight links and the eight kings is related to the seven spirits of God. When the ego overextends its rational convictions, it becomes a lord over a place that has no existence. You understand what they said? They, they rule over what city? The eternal city? They rule over a place that has no existence. Thus, reincarnation of the word, the true word becoming flesh, it requires that the ego must cease. This ego must cease. This is what we began off with James chapter 5, where it speaks about the rich man, the madness, where people are saving up money and stuff for the last day, like, like, like that's going to be value in a new age, in a new day, in a new consciousness after the consciousness collapse you know and and that's going to be you know that's the, that's going to be the great earthquake you right and the beast that was is he is not the convictions so the overextending of rational convictions becomes a lord over a place that has no existence thus the word becoming flesh or quote reincarnation requires that the ego I am. You don't know who I. You don't know who I am. You know that the who you think you are cease its course, and that consciousness must return to the body as common sense. But that if common sense does not rule, then that so-called material rationality in this new day becomes irrationality. This is why it says, "Then like the beasts, they perish like the beasts." This is now. The consciousness returning to the body, you understand, as common sense. You know, it's it's like we are not living in a time of common sense. You know what I mean? It's like even for language that people speak and everything else, people still don't 
understand each other because everybody's caught up in this same ego, you know what I'm saying, in this same false alter ego. But true becoming sons and daughters are, is receiving that word so the word can become flesh. Therefore, the ego, anyone who seeks to follow me, Christ says, must, must deny himself, must deny that ego, let the ego cease its course so that consciousness, you understand, can return to the body as common sense. And this, my brothers and sisters, this is the resurrection this is what these ancient images and this is what these, the ancient people who modern white man science say were illiterate savages who, who worshipped stones and sticks and didn't know what they were painting or doing, but now they are beginning <laughs> in the last day to learn, you know, to know better. Now what they do with what they learn, like what we do, you understand, that is the matter of choice. So this is the resurrection of the body and the word becoming flesh or reincarnation of the mind of the creator. Remember, patience, my brothers and sisters, expediency is a usurpation of eternal life because the devil knoweth that he hath but a short time. So therefore, we as the righteous can outpatience the devil and therefore overcome the devil. You understand? Because he's seeking to do everything for the sake of expediency because he must do it within this short time. Otherwise, he is done. So expediency is their route, you know, the quick and the easy way. But that usurps eternal life, and that creates that falling sickness, you know, that eternal falling around the sun because they are stuck. You know, saying they are stuck at that point, and that creates a non-existence because of the of the false and the vain projections of their hearts and minds. They have created, you understand, their nothingness reality because they rejected the true witness of the stars and the true word that's written in all that's created. You understand, in heaven and earth and in the sea. So, my brothers and sisters, it's been a little bit. Um, long-winded on this one right here, but I'm sure many of y'all will um, be able to gain gnosis and gnosis from this. So, you know, um, walk out the faith in spirit and in truth. And shalom ras tafari.